to miss Bud. You came in second on the first round of just a couple of changes. Yes, we did, Kurt. Uh, we had had a little bad engine there, and uh, had a water injection was off of it, and we kind of torched it. So he just did the best he could that heat, and uh, this Budweiser should pull out in front and go for it this time. What's the mood of the crew? I mean, last week you had the tough break in, in the Tri Cities, and uh, now uh, you've had some good luck here in Lake Washington. So I guess you got to have good attitude. Well, uh, I just went out there and told them all to get a smile on their face because we're going to win. So what the hell are they worrying about? Let's go for it. Right now, and you're happy with the performance of your, your new pilot, Tom D. Oh, yeah, Tom's a great driver. He's a safe driver, and uh, that's what we're after, and we'll be out there for a win. All right, this Heat 2B, how, how do you shape this one up? Well, I think that we'll take a first circuit, second probably, and Jeff third. That's the way they should finish because that we got 10 mile an hour on them, so that's where we ought to be. All right, he's talking Thank about you. the reality of boat racing. That's Bernie Little of the Budweiser. Let's go back to Wayne Cody. All right, Ron. Now, they may have certain strategies on them take advantage of or expose. <laughs> and I'm not going to tip their hand, though, for the final no. heat entirely, I think, Steve, that much I could, uh, I think you could probably assure. Well, we're inside the one-minute gun, and what's very interesting now is that unlike days in the gone by where there was a lot of circling around going on in the midside of the course, look at all these guys. They're all hanging together, all, together all the way up the back chute, taking it easy, all down on power, all within a few feet of each other, all watching very closely. There's Tom Deeth on the inside of the Miss Budweiser. The Pringles is there, wide and outside, wisely, of course, will be the U.S. West Cellular. There she is, leading the rest of them up. And the Circus Circus is packed in there, so is Mitch and the Seco. They're all right into the name, into the game there, rather, and uh, also the old boy, Alberto, Miss KUBE, is in this one. So we've got them all just bunched up. The clock is ticking away. And they'll start coming up on the power curve ever so slightly now as they do. Inside it will be Budweiser. It looks like Circus will be out in about the five lane in between the Bud and the Circus. It will be the Seco. Out the six lane will be the Mr. Pringles. Oh boy, Oberto, KUBE in the seven lane. And wide outside, here comes the U.S. West Cellular. Now, we did not get a starter's gun. We did not get a starter's gun on this part, so we're not sure what the legal start is not going to be, but that it was. There's the Budweiser running through the corner now. Out front, the Circus Circus is the rooster tail on the outside coming around the corner. That's Mr. Pringles in third position, and the others bunch in. Up the back chute, it is Miss Budweiser, this time considerably faster off the first turn than she was, and riding a good deal lighter over the water, too, Steve. Much they obviously faster. made that combination Came up the change. turn very, very well. Going up the back stretch with some kind of authority, too. You bet she is, and so is the Circus Circus on the outside. This is going to be a good finish to this first lap, also. Here's the Budweiser bouncing over those uh, rollers in the north turn. Coming down to end lap number one with the Circus Circus coming wide and outside. Staying a safe distance back, but also strong. Here's your lap speed, 135.5 for the Budweiser and 126.6 for the lap for the uh, Miss Circus Circus. The Pringles in third place. And the real jewel now is for fourth, and there are three boats in it. And they are all running strong. The Oh Boy, Alberto KUBE, the U.S. West Cellular, as well as the Seco Aviation Fuels. They're all three going in that south turn side by side. Look at there, now they're scrambling up. Mike, my thought is that Scotty Pierce can't be too cute. One of those boats might come up and nip him if he's not careful. Now, you're absolutely right. He knows, though, Wayne. He sees him in the rearview mirror, and he sees George uh, Woods now, who's moving up on him in the Oh Boy, Alberto KUBE. But there is a strong challenge coming from the outside now from the Miss U.S. West Cellular and from the inside from Mitch Evans on George Woods as the, the Miss Budweiser comes down to finish lap number two, still out front. Her speed there, 129.9. Chip finishes lap two also at 127.6, but still the uh, strong back battle is for fourth place which is a real contest real contest we've got the uh, we've got the uh, mr. Pringles coming down to finish lap but number one or lap number two rather uh, with uh, a speed of 115 but here's the real circus now the oh boy Alberto miss KUBE is the boat there in your center screen that's Mitch Evans inside in the Seco and on the outside there she is on your left on your screen there. That is the U.S. West Cellular, and they're all hanging together. Look at there. That's a great shot race for fourth up. place. Tremendous race. This is a real battle because these fourth place points are very, very important going into the final heat now for these boys. Very important race. Out of the north turn now, Miss Budweiser continues to lead approximately by five feet over the Miss Circus Circus. Here she comes down to finish the lap. 
Some speed on this for the bud. 125.7. Circus Circus holding the pressure on at 129.1, actually faster than the Budweiser. Chip close the interval between first and second, just about, uh, about a half a second there, which is quite a, quite a bit of distance. He has closed it down. Pringles is in a safe third place position at this point, and it appears that the old boy Alberto, Miss KUBE, is also in a very safe uh, fourth place position now, having beaten off the challenge of both the uh, U.S. West and the Seacoast Aviation Fuel. But it is the Seco still working on the U.S. West, though, in that north turn, keeping it interesting for the battle for fifth and sixth. 115.7 now for the Mr. Pringles. Nice, strong, steady speed. The roller action in that north turn there as Miss Budweiser comes through is mean. Oh, but she is riding over it far, far better than she did in her first appearance on this race course. That comes down. Whoa! Almost stuffs there as she comes down to take lap number four at 131.9. The circus is keeping up the pace at 131.6. They're hanging right in there. Now Tommy has had to back down the throttle going to the turn, and Chip is starting to move up on him. Third place overall, still Mr. Pringles at a good distance. Now they're coming into traffic, and Chip has started to move up on the Budweiser now on the south turn. Chip senses he might be able to uh, cause some trouble for Tom Dee. Up the back chute now on lap number five with traffic with slower boats ahead of them. That's Chip Hanauer on the extreme outside of your screen there on the right trying to Close make Close the ground, too. Look at Chip go. Come on. The crowd senses it, and they love it. Chip's outside of it. All right, lots of traffic in this turn now. It'll be the Budweiser trying to hold Chip wide to the outside. It looks like he will be successful in doing that. There's Chip sliding outside. He's going to have enough. It doesn't appear to be able to take the Budweiser to the finish line, but he's going to make a close of it. All right, here Budweiser going to get the checkered flag to hit, win Heat 2B at 122.8, and Chip comes across at 123.2, so he gave it a strong pitch, but it wasn't enough. In the meantime, we still have boats racing out there. In third place overall, three-quarters of the way up the back chute, it is the Mr. Pringles, and that battle continues between Todd Garling and Mitch Evans, and that's for fifth place. There's a struggle going on out there that isn't going to give up until it comes to the line. A third place overall coming out of the north turn, that's this boat, Mr. Pringles. And Scott continues to drive conservatively right where he wants to be. He will make the final heat, expect some real action out of this boat next. And I think he has to like the ride, Steve Reynolds. It's been a good one for him. Yeah, it has been. He did just what he wanted to do. He wanted to run conservatively, get, some, get a feel, get the adjustments they made to the boat, get the information back to the crew. Oh boy, Alberto, K-U-B-E, finishes fourth now with a final lap of 110.4. And here comes Todd Yarling. He will get scored fifth overall. Doesn't have a wing, doesn't have a tail, doesn't have a cowling, and doesn't have a prayer for the final heat, but he does have he does have a victory over Mitch Evans, and this is a moral victory for Todd Yarling, who almost didn't get a chance to race this afternoon because of that traffic jam accident he had in the first heat today. Did finish, but then went dead in the water and is drifting on the front chute. You're seeing... There's Ron with Tom. Take it, Ron. Tom, we're on live now with Cairo. Tell us about the run. Uh, you got ahead. You had the 135 for the first lap, and then Chip tried to catch up with you. Well, it was uh, the water was a little better that heat, and, and the Miss Budweiser ran a lot better that heat, so we won. We we're real glad about that. So you're happy about the changes you made in the engine and, and that sort of thing? Right. The, the combination seems to be okay now. It's got plenty of acceleration, so that's what I was looking for. So you're satisfied and you're ready for the final heat now? Yep, we're just going to take a look at everything, make sure everything's fine, and we're okay. But Bernie, how about you? How'd you feel with that heat? Well, I liked it very much. Uh, August Bush is with us here. Of course, come in from St. Louis. We had to win something for him, right? <laughs> All right well, good luck in the final. Well, thank you. We'll be there. Bernie Little and Tom Dees and the Budweiser happy crew right now, Wayne. August Bush. Wayne, a little difficult to hear down here right now because the crane is working extra hard. They're getting ready to remove the U.S. West Cellular from the water. But let's turn to Chip Hanauer, Circus Circus driver. Chip, a little more of a horse race that time. You came up second place to the Miss Bud, but you looked like you were gaining ground at the end. Yeah, we were. I thought I could get him at the end, but uh, I came this close to blowing the boat over again. Um, there was some lapping traffic up there. I thought, great, you know, I'm gaining on him, and I'll get him pinned in there with that lap traffic. And all of a sudden, the boat got up in the air, and I thought, oh, no, here we go. Syracuse all over again. And by the time I got it back down and got the engine back up to speed, uh, it was too late. Now, you only have literally a split second to make a decision like that. It's the experience that lets you know when to put on that throttle, uh, the, uh, the uh, throttle and when to pull off of it. 
you knew though immediately that you were starting to take a little air and get yeah, ready to go? Well, no, I, I actually got uh, beyond that point, and I'm just lucky I got the ball back. And I just got too aggressive again, and I just got to remember to back my aggressiveness off a half a click. And uh, because it's not worth, you know, winning an elimination heat is not worth blowing the boat over backwards. So I, just a good reminder to me that uh, I got to take her easy. Well, now what happens in the final to race to stay up with the butt? Do you have to continue to push that end, that stretch that envelope? I do. You know, they got a better boat and they're faster, and but I can't do that. I mean, I've got to run this boat where it's safe to run it, and if they go by us, they go by us. And if that's first or fifth, I got to live with it because you just can't get another one upside down this year. For a man who almost went flying, you're pretty calm right now. Well, I, you do it enough years. Uh, I just got to learn from. It. I got to sit myself down in the truck and say, Chip, you know, get your priorities straight. Do the best you can with what you got, and leave it at that. We'll let you go sit yourself down, Chip. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Steve. Wayne. All right, thanks. Flex the ball, August.